If you hear that Kostaki Economopolis shot people at the mall, it was me. <laughs> I guess we should start with the name, huh? That's my name. I grew up named Kostaki Economopolis. Yeah, in Georgia. And my first job was on a construction site, so I got a whole lot of watch your own them two by fours down there, Kawasaki Econo Lodge. <laughs> Sweep that house out, Suzuki Snuffleupagus. I've heard them all, man. Kabuki Metropolis, Karaoke Streptococcus. Those are all real. Names are weird. I have a buddy who has the same name as someone who snapped and shot a bunch of people at the malls. Now he has that association with his name. See, I will never have that problem. If you hear that Kostaki Economopolis shot people at the mall, it was me. <laughs> it's nice, I get to control that. I'm a married man, I've been married four years now. We know the odds, right? 50% of marriages end in divorce. And the other half end in death. So we know going in, it's not gonna end well. <laughs> We're rooting for death. <laughs> ah, honey, I hope this ends in a death. I hope one of us dies and the other one's nearby and sad. That's how we know we won. <laughs> if I was a divorce lawyer, my slogan would be, it's the only way to get out of this alive. Love my wife. She's though completely obsessed with unplugging the toaster, which I've never even heard of. Apparently it's a fire hazard. She's yelling at me from the other room. Unplug the toaster, you're gonna burn the place down. Like I can't even burn the toast unless I push it down twice. <laughs> a toaster is a self-contained metal box on a stone slab. Might be this the whole safest thing in the whole place. If a toaster breaks in the on position the whole day you're at work, what would happen? It would just gently warm the area immediately around the toaster. I'm like, honey, the two wooden spoons are a bigger fire hazard. There could be an earthquake and they might rub against each other. <laughs> Unplug the toaster, it's dangerous. Meanwhile, she's lighting a candle underneath a curtain. She's setting a curling iron on a newspaper. Like, honey, the, it's, yeah. the butter next to the toaster is a bigger hazard to our lives, right? Generations of economopoli have been dropping dead from heart disease <laughs> since the beginning of time. No one's ever died from a runaway toaster fire. <laughs> have you ever even heard of one? You go to work, your friend's all covered in black char. What happened, dude? Really? Another toaster fire? <laughs> Tough month. <laughs> The other thing my wife does that drives me bananas, I'll ask her where she wants to eat, and she will say to me, oh, I don't know, you pick. Yeah, yeah you're familiar? <laughs> then I pick, then she winces, and says, could we not go there? <laughs> yeah, we cannot go there. In fact, here's the magic of communication. We can go to exactly the place that you want to go. All you have to do is say what it is. <laughs> Why are we playing a crazy game right now? I'm hungry. <laughs> then we got a marriage license, also a weird phrase. License implies that if you're bad at it, they could take it away. <laughs> Dude, I heard you went to New Orleans with a bunch of guy friends. How was that trip? It was awesome, but I did get three points on my marriage license. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to stay in the slow lane for a little while. <laughs> my wife's Italian from New Jersey. The rumor about the temper is true. Here's something I've never had to say to my beautiful bride ever. What is it, honey? You can tell me. <laughs> no, when she's mad, it's not a secret. <laughs> 20 years ago, I was dating a vanilla white girl and she would give me the silent treatment and I hated it so much and now, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> I miss it. Now I think she was messing with me. Really, you're mad, but you're not gonna talk? Deal. <laughs> I'm gonna watch the game. Let me know when you're done being mad. <laughs> Woe is me. You got me. <laughs> I've 
I've also been trying to convince my wife for about five years now that I do not snore in order to ruin her life. I'm like, babe, I didn't even know it was happening until you woke me up to tell me about it. Which, by the way, how is that a net gain for the team? I'm asleep, you're awake. You wake me up, now we're both awake? Why is this better? I don't understand. <laughs> Next time, leave, cut out the middleman. Leave the happy sleeping guy. You sleep on the couch. We'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> One guy's clapping. All right. <laughs> One night we're talking about snoring. I go, what if you were deaf? Am I snoring be a problem then? She goes, no. Okay. So we've established that your hearing is the problem. <laughs> Should I just get my stuff and go to the couch now? Yeah, I thought so. I love her, man. I love her so much it scares me, I said to a friend of mine. And then I had to think about it. What's scary about love? It's so fun. It's so wee. I think there's a fear in love. I think when you're really in love, there's a vulnerability. You're afraid that it's going to someday not be, right? She could die, run off with another dude. I would be devastated. And then I was thinking, if she died or ran off with another dude, either way, my day-to-day -day life after that would be pretty much the same. But I think it would be easier for me emotionally if she died. <laughs> right? It's weirdly true, because if she leaves me for somebody else and I wasn't enough, I was crabby in the morning, I wasn't emotionally available, I wasn't intellectually stimulating, I was, I was a drag somehow, whatever. Some terrible, painful truth, but hit by a bus, not my fault. <laughs> it's not on me, that's all I'm saying. It's an easier next 30 years for me. I know, I'm not well. I, uh, I could ruin a compliment, too. My wife gave me a great compliment one night, and I ruined it. I feel so bad about it. She said to me, you're the sexiest man alive, which is a ridiculous compliment. You know, it's not even a little bit true, but it's a nice thing to say to a person. I should have said thanks. You know what I went with? Alive. <laughs> Why you got to window it down to people who are alive? You got something for Patrick Swayze or something? Yeah, told you I ruined it. <laughs> Too soon? We can go back further if you want. <laughs> Truman Capote? I don't know. If we go back further, is Abraham Lincoln? Does it get funnier if you go someone not so recent? <laughs> As a Greek, I was excited to see this set, by the way. <laughs> For uh, a lot of Americans, an uh, octopus is like scary 20,000 leagues under the sea or something. But to a Greek, it's like, hey, dinner. All right. <laughs> Excellent. We were in Greece a few years ago. We saw there's an airline from Cyprus called Icarus Air. <laughs> Remember Icarus? He didn't finish his flight. <laughs> Icarus wanted to fly to the sun. And his dad's like, well, that's not a very good idea. And he's like, screw you, dad. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, <laughs> And he built some wings out of wax and feathers, and he flew to the sun, and as he got close, they melted and he fell to his death, and it's a parable about listening to your dad. At least that's the way my dad told me the story. <laughs> and when the people of Cyprus started up an airline, they thought, well, what's a good story to inspire air travel? Hmm. <laughs> Hindenburg's been taken. <laughs> Let's go with Icarus. Icarus Air. It's better than Oedipus Air, I guess. I mean, that's a... <laughs> That's a terrible flight. Okay, Greek mythology, who's with me? Seven of you enjoy Greek mythology. <laughs> we got a kiddo, uh, nine-year-old daughter, awesome kid. Yeah, you followed the math, right? Four-year-old marriage, nine-year-old kid. Yeah. There's a lot more to that story. But the kid's been fun in every phase. When she was one, she didn't poop for three days in a row, and her mother was freaking out. I'm like, what are you freaking out about? This is like a dream come true. Our baby doesn't poop, we win. This kid's like a seedless watermelon. We get a poopless dog, we're gonna have the perfect family. When she was three, we were in Australia for a comedy festival when she learned about crosswalks. And it's very easy in Australia. There's a red man and a green man. And we learn the whole thing. Then we come back to New York where we live, and there's a white man and an orange hand. Which makes no sense, but I never even thought about it until I had to explain it to a new person, you know? 
Cut to, again, totally true. Busy New York City street corner, people everywhere, loud three-year-old. Dad, we have to wait for the white man. <laughs> yeah, let's use our inside voice for this conversation. Yes, Sonny, we have to wait for the white man. He decides everything. <laughs> let's see what the white man has to say. And having a kid exposes you to other kids, which is also challenging. I was on a park bench watching her play one day. I don't know, I guess my belly was sticking out. A little boy I've never seen runs up, points at me and goes, you look like you have a baby in your tummy. And he runs away. It's like, what the? That kid had no idea the emotional toll he left behind. That was a long bike ride that night, I can tell you that. To the hospital to make sure he was okay. She's a great kid. She was expensive to get to hang out with. We had to survive a custody battle. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. It's so dumb. I'm embarrassed it's part of our story. The lawyer was $500 an hour. Does that seem like a fair price to talk to a human? <laughs> I live in New York. I thought it'd be more than it should be. That's how New York is, but that hurt my feelings. It's like $500. Is there a lobster? Is there a hang gliding lesson in a root canal? What's happening in this hour? According to my budget, we're gonna have to resolve this in 30 minutes. <laughs> Talk fast, chop, chop. It's crazy. And you can't get your head around how much it costs because they charge you for everything. They, they write an email to the judge, they have a meeting with the other lawyers, they write up a thing, they file a motion, they talk to you, they go back. And this goes on for days and weeks and months and a year. For all the money we spent, we could have had two kids, each gotten one. <laughs> That's a cleaner break there. All right, Ava, you got the long straw. Go say goodbye to mom. <laughs> Hug your brother. It's going to be a tough road for that kid. <laughs> it's crazy. It's not even socially responsible to spend money like that. You could save children in Africa for 60 cents a day. If we just stop fighting over one little white girl, we could save all of the children of Africa. <laughs> but then, of course, I would get to know and love the children of Africa, and she would try to keep me from seeing them. Back to square one. <laughs> you can laugh about my pain. It's fun. <laughs> the one good thing that came from it, it broke me from being cheap. I don't care how much things cost anymore. My wife wanted to go see Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. She's like, oh, tickets are 150 bucks each. I'm like, well. We spent 100,000 to see a nine-year-old. <laughs> she doesn't know any of our favorite songs. <laughs> she kind of sucks on the piano. <laughs> Let's go see Billy. He was great. One of her mother's brilliant ideas during the negotiation process was that we each get a life insurance policy with the other parent as the beneficiary. <laughs> no, I'm not paying for the bounty on my own head. <laughs> Nor do I need to be tempted in the other direction. If she dies, they're gonna come talk to me first, and they should. Uh, I don't need a pot of gold at the end of that daydream. <laughs> Well, all my problems would be over immediately, and I'd get a million dollars. It'd be irresponsible not to consider that. <laughs> and I'm sure, as a guy in the world, I had advantages big and small, some of which I wasn't even aware of my whole life, just from being a guy. But when you're a guy in a custody battle, you are way behind before you even start. Because culturally, we think women are better at raising children than men. And why? Have you looked around the world? People suck, and women raised almost all of us. <laughs> Come on, that is a fun, fun point. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll walk it back. On balance, as a generalization, are women better at raising children than men? Yes, of course, it's not even close. The gap is so large. Think about how low the standards are for fathers in this country. To be dad of the year, all you gotta do is not drink during the day. It's a good father, right? He's sober till dinner. What do you want from the man? It's 
crazy. So we ended up with Ava about half the time, which we could have done on a napkin in a diner for free two years prior. It's maddening. It's crazy. And I wish we had her all the time. I think she'd be better off, and we'd love that kid. Uh, the good news is there's a silver lining. I get a break. I get, I get to come talk to you guys for a few days. I get to go home, be super dad. I don't have that thousand-yard stare the way sometimes parents do when they're with their kids all the time. Uh, let's face it, kids are a little bit like Las Vegas. <laughs> Follow me on this. <laughs> when you get to Las Vegas, you're like, I love Las Vegas so much. And then three days later, you're like, I got to get the hell out of Vegas. <laughs> It's true, right? <laughs> so I'm a dad half the time. Can we do marriage half the time too? I think it'd be a lot easier to be married if it was every other weekend and Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, I love you too, honey, but it's not our weekend. <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday. We just went to a wedding. Here's a question. Why do we give gifts to people getting married? People getting married are in love. They don't need things to be happy. We should give gifts to people getting a divorce. Because <laughs> when you're alone, crying in a studio apartment, that's when it'd be good to have a really nice toaster. <laughs> I've been there. Sometimes toast is the highlight of your day. Things get really sad. Just bring that thing into the tub with you. you know. <laughs> That's when you want to unplug the toaster. <laughs> That's a very dangerous toaster situation. That I'll agree with. Some of our traditions happen at the wrong times. Obviously, the bachelor party should happen after the divorce. <laughs> now you're a bachelor. Enjoy that side of life. Hanging with drunks and strippers, that's no way to prepare for marriage. The bridal shower, that's a weird tradition. You hang around, you give the bride sexy underwear. First of all, you got this guy. You need sexy underwear. Show up naked, that's all we care about anyway. <laughs> right? Besides, you're embarking on a journey. It's gonna be hard. You gotta get along with another human being in an intimate way for a long period of time. The bridal shower should be a pep talk about lowering your expectations. <laughs> He knows I'm right. <laughs> Some of our traditions happen at the wrong times. Catholics, confirmation, 13, does that seem a little young to anybody else? The greatest thinkers and philosophers since the beginning of time have been trying to figure out whether or not there's a God. Let's ask the kid with the braces and the acne what he thinks. <laughs> you can't ask a child a question like that. You gotta find a grown up. All right, man, you're 63. None of your dreams came true. <laughs> You're upside down in your house and your wife can't stand to hear you breathe. How do you feel about God? <laughs> That's a more interesting conversation. Some of our traditions are weird, man. Even the little ones, like a housewarming gift. I just got to the neighborhood. You're bringing me a pie. I can't bake a pie. You're proving you're a better homemaker than I am on day one. <laughs> Slow down. You gonna bring your genius homeschool kid over too? <laughs> Obviously that's a joke. No homeschool kid is a genius. <laughs> is that hitting close to home, Utah? All right. Some traditions are weird. I like the tradition of serving drinks to people on airplanes. I fly, that's nice. But what about the people on the bus? Because if you're on the bus, things are not going well. You could use a drink. Give that man a drink, he's on Greyhound. Oh. I took Greyhound a few times in the old days. Oh, it's just a bunch of people who don't have a car or a friend with a car. Scouts from the Springer show were there looking for talent. Uh, <laughs> the bus is so slow. And they have the gall to name it after a racing dog. This bus should be called Crippled Poodle. <laughs> Chihuahua with rickets. <laughs> Maybe the strangest tradition in all of American culture, the retirement party. Really? You're giving me a gold watch today? 
the first day of my whole life that I don't care what time it is. I'm never gonna look at a watch again. Watch me trade this in for a hammock. <laughs> I would love to be retired. That's something an old guy says, right? I'm looking forward to it now. Here's how I know I'm getting older. Now when I see a beautiful teenage girl, I think to myself, wow, I bet she's got a hot mom. <laughs> it's funny, I wanna see the mother now. I didn't know that was the next phase of life. Does that continue? Eventually I'm like, where's granny? All right. <laughs> I want to see three generations of this magic. Let's go. <laughs> trying to eat better now that I'm a grown up. You enjoying the rice cakes as much as I am? Why do they come with a twist tie? Are they worried they're going to go stale? <laughs> These are terrible. Yes, they're fresh. A rice cake, it's, it tastes like a styrofoam, like you punched a circle out of a styrofoam cooler or something. <laughs> First time I had rice cakes, I thought there was a mix up at the factory. Well, obviously these are the packing materials that the cakes usually come in. <laughs> Keep them moist and delicious. How do you screw up rice and cake? Those are both good things. Rice pudding is awesome. Carrot cake, fantastic. Rice cake, kill yourself. A urinal cake is better than a rice cake. <laughs> At least then you have low expectations. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> so I did end up getting life insurance for my little family, and it's weird, that's the most grown up thing I've ever done. A guy came to my place, took my blood and urine, asked me a bunch of questions, uh, went away, figured out my likelihood of dying, came back, offered me a price, I took that bet, and now the only way I can win is to die. <laughs> they basically come to you and say, hey, I bet you won't die in 20 years, and you say, I bet I will. <laughs> oh, I'm serious, let's put a half mil on this, let's do it. <laughs> These are all actual questions from the life insurance exam. Uh, do you use tobacco products? No. Do you own a motorcycle? No. Do you fly non-commercial jets? No. Then the pace picks up. There's like 30 of these. Do you go hang gliding? No. Do you go skydiving? No. Do you go scuba diving? No. Do you race cars? No. Do you go spelunking? No. I'm saying no to everything. And in my head, I'm like, I'm saving money. <laughs> the guy leaves and a wave of sadness hits me. I'm like, I gotta get a life. <laughs> I'm not doing any of the fun stuff. <laughs> so I'm trying to pay attention to what's going on in the world. I don't know if you saw this. Scientists found a drug that reduces obesity in mice. Well, thank, thank God for that, huh? <laughs> Nothing's more embarrassing than your friends come over and your big fat mice are all laying around. <laughs> you gotta lie to your friends. I'm sorry you gotta see this. I put them on a program. You guys told me you were gonna run in the wheel. <laughs> no, we're doing research on the mice, right? Because we're good for a drug to make us thin. Because we all want to be thin. We just don't want to have to eat less or move around. <laughs> it's so American. We're freaked out about thinness. Heard a diet product out on the radio, this is their claim. It works three times faster than starvation. What? Yeah. <laughs> How do they even know? that it works faster than starvation. <laughs> Have some bizarre clinical trial. Here's Mandy, she eats three meals a day and uses our product. Next to her, little Naboo, he's starving. <laughs> no, Naboo, you can't have her food, you're in the control group. <laughs> Put down the pickle, get back on the scale. Obsessed about our weight. It's crazy. A friend of mine said, I'm up three quarters of a pound. Who cares? If all you care about is the number that's on the scale, try amputation. <laughs> I'm on the new amputation weight loss program. With one simple procedure, I lost 14 pounds. <laughs> Plus now I can park wherever I want. <laughs> and I am burning way more calories hopping to stuff.
This is true. My dad had one leg. He thought that was a funny joke. <laughs> My dad lost a leg in war-torn Greece when he was seven years old. And they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That is not true. He was very easy to push over. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder if Flamingo has ever pissed my dad off. <laughs> yeah, they got two good legs, they stand there on one. Seems rude. <laughs> I later saw the phrase single amputee and it made me think of my dad and laugh because it made it sound like he was dating or something, you know, like single amputee seeking woman who likes short walks. <laughs> Right? I mean, life's short. I mean, yeah. It doesn't happen often, but once in a while, someone will get mad at something that a comedian says, which has always been weird to me. Like, if you're with a friend, you say something off putting, like, dude, I was just kidding, right? And they're like, oh, you're kidding. All right. The tension goes away. You're just kidding. This whole thing is, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what this is. I was in Pensacola one night, and I said, to me, surrogate motherhood is just a really intimate form of babysitting. <laughs> right? Like, here's our embryo, we'll be back in nine months. <laughs> a pregnant lady stood up and started screaming at me. She was a surrogate mother, she didn't think that was funny. I'm like, well, first of all, lady, I don't care. <laughs> Second of all, why are you in a smoky bar? You should be fired from this job. <laughs> One night, Indianapolis, I was talking about a peanut allergy, and there's a guy in the crowd with the peanut allergy. He's mad. He threatens to take me into the alley and beat me up. Hey, right. And I'm very proud, though. I was like, I don't think so, buddy, because I might have a Snickers bar. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of you, dude. You can die from peanut dust. <laughs> Look out, there might be some under my fingernails from the airplane. <laughs> Run away. If I need to, I'll get some Skippy Smooth, put an invisible force field on me, buddy. You don't know. What you gonna do now, peanut boy? One night, Santa Cruz, California, basically the joke was, don't beat your wife. You think we could all jump on board with that premise? Nope. <laughs> Crazy drunk lady up front. This is a direct quote. You don't understand. Sometimes you have to let a man work through a phase. <laughs> yeah, I've been on the road a long time and I was like, ah, hmm. I, <laughs> I have no idea how to respond to that. <laughs> drunk women are the trickiest for a comedian because you can't tear her apart because the crowd thinks you're being too hard. But once in a while, a drunk woman will interrupt the show so much that everyone in the room hates her guts. And once that happens, you can say whatever the hell you want. <laughs> and it totally happened that night. She was just ruining the show. And finally, I told the guy she was with, I was like, dude, would you please take her in the parking lot and take care of her so I could finish up in here? <laughs> I was the king of comedy for that minute. <laughs> that was fun for me. So what's my point while I'm here? Be nice to each other. If we learn anything as human beings in life, help somebody out, even if you don't know the guy, right? Say you're walking down the street, see a parking ticket on somebody's car, take that thing off of there, throw it away. <laughs> right? Why should he have to deal with that headache? He won't even have to know about it. expect everybody to agree with me about everything. I still run to people once in a while who are against child labor. <laughs> We've all seen kids bouncing off the walls at seven in the morning on a Saturday. Let them make some Nikes for a while. <laughs> they learn a trade. They make three dollars a day. In college, that's called an internship. <laughs> You gotta see the upside in some of these things, like Alzheimer's. Most of us spend our whole lives trying to forget stuff. You gotta let her go, you gotta forget about her. We've spent our whole lives trying to forget terrible things that have happened. And finally, with Alzheimer's, you're free. 
<laughs> and it happens at the perfect time. Nature's so beautiful. It's when you're old, your body's falling apart, your kids are ignoring you, live in a nursing home. Imagine how miserable you'd be if you could remember all that stuff. <laughs> I, for one, am looking forward to a time when I can legitimately answer every question with, I'm a pirate. <laughs> How come you didn't get me a Valentine's Day card? I'm a pirate. <laughs> you're, you're clocked out. And we think of the old-fashioned pirates with the hook and the eye patch. By the way, if you ever get a hook, get yourself an eye patch. You're gonna get distracted and your eye's gonna get itchy. <laughs> I think that's why we see those as a set. Get an athletic cup, there's gonna be an adjustment period. <laughs> why do you have a hook on the end of your stump? You're gonna kill yourself with that thing. Is it even useful? Remember that time Jimmy saved the day with his hook? Nope. <laughs> I can't even think of a thing that you would use a hook for. What are you, delivering ice for a living? <laughs> Any noun is better than a hook. A frickin' spoon would be better. <laughs> Pirates gotta have yo play once in a while. <laughs> Any noun is better than a hook. A spoon, a, a mechanical pencil, a protractor, a garden weasel, binoculars. Right? A hair curler, anything, a shot glass. Get a Swiss army knife, then you got some choices. <laughs> got a lot of weird ideas. <laughs> uh, I was at the grocery store, I'm standing in front of the grapes, and I'm thinking, where's the line between sampling and stealing? You know? How many grapes can you eat before somebody freaks out, runs over, kicks you out of the store? 19. Yeah. Yeah, so you take that as a tip. And they definitely have a zero tolerance policy on sampling the canned beverages. I always wondered how many stock boys it would take to throw me out of a store. One. Here's another grocery question for you. Why do we eat honey out of a plastic bear? Bears don't make honey. Well, bears like honey. Well, bears like salmon. I wouldn't eat salmon out of a bear. I wouldn't eat a banana out of a monkey. It doesn't make sense, honey and a bear. And think of the message that sends to our children. Hey, kids, if you squeeze a bear, you'll get a sugary treat. Kids have to know the truth. If you want a sugary treat, you have to squeeze a bee. Yeah. That's called fun with a four-year-old. You buy lemon juice in the store, comes in a plastic lemon. That makes sense. You buy syrup, you think that would come in a tree. Mrs. Butterworth. I guess it's the bear rule. She likes syrup. I don't know. I wouldn't drink Budweiser out of a big fat guy. Yeah, I probably would. I'm from Georgia. <laughs> Doing some reading, found out Marco Polo was an explorer. I thought it was just some guy lost in a pool. <laughs> Marco Polo, right? The great kids' pool game. Why would he name that game after him? It wasn't lost in the water. That game should be called Amelia Earhart. <laughs> She's not here, laugh it up. Marco Polo's a bad message for kids anyway. Think about how it's played. One kid pretends to be blind. The other kids splash water in his face and taunt him for not being able to see. It's terrible. A lot of the games we played had bad messages. Musical chairs, what's the message there? Hover your own ass. Screw your buddies if you have to. Take care of yourself. The pinata. Beat the heck out of a senseless animal with a stick. And if you're really extra violent, you'll get some candy. Well, you won't because you will have a blindfold on, but your friends will. Just another case of the blind guy getting screwed. A lot of bad messages for kids. The Tooth Fairy. Body parts are worth cash. Santa 
Santa Claus. Sit on a bearded stranger's lap. Tell him your name and where you live. <laughs> Halloween. Take candy from strangers. And if they don't give you any, vandalize their homes. <laughs> this is the worst message for kids ever in a game. Remember this one? Smear the queer. <laughs> that was a game when I was a boy. Now it's a hate crime. Remember Red Rover, Red Rover? One kid runs over, he breaks through that line, he gets to stay on that side, which is basically our immigration policy. <laughs> well, you did get here. How do you feel about picking fruit? Oh, that's where you draw the line? All right. <laughs> Are you guys football fans, NFL fans? Where are you? Some of you? What teams do you root for here? You guys are kind of between a few. Denver? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Chargers? Raiders, really? All right, we got a, we got a good mix here. That's nice. All right, wait, wait. so you, you got Broncos, right? Broncos fan? I think the Broncos are a cool story, right? Tim Tebow came to that team and taught them about the power of prayer. <laughs> and they prayed for a real quarterback. <laughs> And Peyton Manning came, and they won a Super Bowl. It's a nice story. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tim Tebow's a good broadcaster, right? He's good at something that goes through the air after all, so that's nice. <laughs> Raiders. How'd you become a Raiders fan? I don't know. I grew up one. You grew up one? Really? Did you, are you from there? You just like scary pirates and losing teams? I don't know. <laughs> It's the hook. Good callback. <laughs> Points for you, sir. It's the hook. Now, not everybody will remember this. You will. Jamarcus Russell was the number one overall pick for the Raiders, 2007. He was the last one to work. He was the first one to leave. He was terrible. They paid him $33 million, and they had to cut him and let him go. No one else wanted him. Uh, people always say when they win the lottery, they're going to quit their jobs. That's what Jamarcus Russell did. <laughs> You give me 33 mil for every uh, joke I've written so far, you got yourself a deal, but I don't know how good the jokes are going to be after that. It's hard to write a joke in a hammock with a Mai Tai. <laughs> Where else did I hear? I heard uh, Seahawks, and there's a few other. Okay. BYU. BYU? <laughs> You still got Steve Young. <laughs> Steve Young. Right? Am I right? It's been a while. I'm a lifelong Falcons fan. It's been a tough run for me. I'm not over that Super Bowl yet. Oh, God. Here's the, um, here's the uh, darkest joke I ever wrote was that night. <laughs> At least when you're a Falcons fan and you slit your wrist, you get to die in your own team colors. <laughs> that was a tough game. It won't go away either. My friend's, uh, a friend of mine calls me and he goes, hey man, how was your summer on a scale of 28 to three? <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> we got a female ref in the NFL now, which I think is awesome, right? It's a good match, right? Oh. Women have been interrupting football for years. <laughs> huh? See what I did there? All right. I'm surprised there aren't some differences with a female ref, right? She throws the flag, doesn't tell you why. <laughs> 55, you know. <laughs> female ref, you can get a flag for thinking of committing a penalty. <laughs> you can get in trouble for something you did three weeks ago. <laughs> and no more instant replay. Once she's made up her mind, not interested in the facts. <laughs> I love football. I miss the Red Zone channel. You guys, it's the best. You gotta get it. It's awesome, right? If you don't know, it's one channel that has all the NFL games simultaneously, no commercials, and they only show the teams in the Red Zone. It's so great. I wish they had Kostaki Red Zone, where they just show me the highlights of my own life and cut out all the crap. 
Right? I don't need the airports and the taxi cabs. I want a room full of people laughing, my kids smiling, my wife getting out of the shower. That's it. That's all I need. I'm a simple man. Then occasionally two great things happen simultaneously. They got a double box at the pizza guy here. She dropped the towel. Someone's going to score. Very. I'm very simple. All right, I got a fortune cookie. I think sums things up nicely for me. It said, life is a tragedy for those who feel and a comedy for those who think. And it's true, life is really terrible and it's fantastic. It's all in how you look at it, you know? Take this example. Guy was watching a soccer game. His wife came in and changed the channel. They got into a fight. He killed her, watched the rest of the game and then called the police. All right, that's terrible. But I cut that article out and put it on the refrigerator and now I can watch whatever I want. Thank you for the nice welcome to you tonight.